Hello everyone and welcome to the second part of the sessions on circles and in this session we're going to learn on finding areas of shaded region. So if you are given some shaded region involving circles, how do we find the area of that region, right? So that's what's the first part of this session we'll focus on. So let's say we are given a rectangle and inside the rectangle there are uh, let's say two circles. So let me draw two circles inside the rectangle. Okay. And like this. And let's say both of them have equal radius, even though it's not looking like that. <laughs> and we are asked to find the shaded region. Let's say this region is shaded. Okay. So that's the question. And let's say the radius of... Uh, so, so the circles are touching the rectangles. Okay. And let's say the radius of the circle is given as radius is given as one, one unit. Okay. So what is the area of the shaded region? So let's see. Say if the radius is one, so the diameter is going to be two. So this is one, this is one, right? So again, the second circle, the radius this is one, and this is one, right? So along the length we have four radiuses, right? Or four units. So this is going to be four, right? So let's see along the breadth how many radiuses we have. So we have this which is one and this which is one, right? So we have basically the diameter of the circle in the breadth. So which is basically two units, right? And on the length side we have two diameters which is four units. So what is the total area of the rectangle? So total area of the rectangle that would be equal to length times breadth right so four times two which is equal to eight so the entire area of the rectangle is eight units and to get the shaded region we have to subtract the area of the circles so what is the area of the circle so area of two circles that would be equal to so we learned the formula of the area in the previous session which is pi times radius is squared and what is the value of the radius here the value of the radius is one so basically pi times one squared which is pi and how many circles are there there are two circles right so two times this so two times pi which is basically two pi so this we have to subtract from eight so what is the area of the shaded region so the shaded region is equals to 8 minus 2 pi. So very simple, right? So whenever we are given uh, questions like this, we have to find the area of the unknown uh, surface. Right? So for example, the rectangle was given, but using the circles, we found out the area of the rectangle. And then we subtracted the area of the circles to find the area of the shaded region. So this is kind of the approach that, that we are going to take. Let's let's take another question on this. Okay, so let us take another question on this. So let me put up the question up here. And okay, so I have the question here. Let me zoom it a little bit. So uh, you guys can you know pause the video here and give this question a try, and then we'll be back with the solution. Okay, so I hope you guys have given this question a try. So let us, so we'll use the same concept, right? So we have these two circles inside a rectangle and X and Y are the radius. So basically X to Y, which is one radius and then Y to end is another radius and from this end to X is another radius. So along the length, so along the length, we have three radius, right? And along the breadth, how many radius do we have? So here we have R and here we have R, right? So which is the diameter of the circle. So along the breadth, we have two radius, right? Now, what is given? The area of the circle is seven. So pi times R square is given as seven, right? So what is R square? is equals to 7 over pi, right? So that is 
what is already given. So we are asked to find the area of the rectangle. So what is the area of a rectangle? So area of rectangle is equals to length times breadth. So 3r times 2r. So basically 6r square. And how much is r square? r square is 7 over pi. So 6 times 7 over pi. So which is basically 42 over pi. So 42 over pi should be the answer. So we'll look at the options. And option D, 42 over pi is the correct answer. Okay. So this is how we are going to solve questions which in which um, there may be circle inside a rectangle or you know square inside it sorry square inside a circle and stuff like that but whatever is given using that we'll try to find what is not given or the unknown and that is how and that's the approach that we are going to take when we are solving questions like this okay so now let's move to uh, another uh, section of questions from circles so these questions usually involve the relationship between the diameter and chords okay so let's understand the relationships okay so let me draw a circle up here and let's say uh, we have a chord a b let's say we have a chord a b and we draw a point from the center perpendicular to the chord AB and that goes through the center and goes through AB and is perpendicular to AB. So this is basically the diameter, right? This is the diameter and AB is the chord, right? So this we already discussed earlier. So now let's understand what is what are the properties that come from this relationship, right? So if this diameter is perpendicular to the chord then it will bisect the chord and it will also bisect the arcs so what does it mean so let's say this point is let's say we call it x and this is o so if this diameter if this diameter is perpendicular to the chord then what will happen it will bisect the chord so basically ax will be equal to bx and even the length of the chord so let's call it uh, uh, let's call it c so arc ac will also be equal to arc bc okay so if the diameter bisects the chord then this length must be equal so ab or ax must be equals to bx and even the length of the chord or ac will be equals to bc okay so that is a very important relationship that we uh, and and there are questions that come using the relationship and we will solve questions on this okay okay so let's uh, learn another property uh, of diameters and chords so let's say uh, let me okay so let's say we have a circle here and we have two chords and the chords are congruent means the chords are equal in length so let's say we have chord a b and we have chord uh, b c or c d okay and the lengths of the chords are equal so a b is equal to c d so if this is true then the perpendicular distance from the center which is this and the perpendicular distance from center to the chord which is this let's call it o and let's call it x and let's call it y so if a b is equal to c d then o x is equals to o y so another very important relationship if the chords are congruent or chords are equal in length then the perpendicular distance from the center is going to be the same and the converse is also true so if ox is equal to oy then ab or the chords on which the distance is from the center must be equal to cd okay so this is another important relationship 
that from which questions comes in the SAT exam. So now using, you know, we understood the relationship. Let's use the relationship in one question. Okay, so let me put up the question. Okay, so now let's solve an interesting question using all these properties. So let me uh, put this up here. Um, so just give me one second while I put up the question. And okay, I think I have the question up here. And okay. So again, you can pause the video at this point and give it a try. And then we'll be back with the solution. Okay, I hope you guys have given it a try. So let's read the question together. In the figure above, PQ is the diameter of the circle because it is passing through the center. And AB is parallel to PQ and parallel to CD. So all of these are parallel. And AB is equal to CD. So two chords are equal. So we can think of whenever you're talking, whenever it said that two chords are equal, we can always think of this property, right? You can always think of this property. If two chords are equal, then they are equidistant from the center, right? So we may have to use the property. So let's see whether we will have to use it or not. Okay. And then what is given is the length of the chord is three-fourth the length of the diameter PQ. So let's say the diameter PQ, uh, let's say the radius is R. So the PQ is twice of R and the length of AB is equals to three quarter of the diameter. So three quarter of two R, right? Which is basically three over two R. So everything we are getting in terms of R. Because the uh, if R represents the, the radius of the circle, what is the distance between the chord A, B and C, D in terms of R? So we have to find the distance between chord A, B and C, D. So let us draw perpendicular from O to AB and O to CD. So basically let's call it X and let's call it Y. So basically our question is asking for the value of XY. XY equals to question mark, okay? So now the length of the chords are basically given as same. We have drawn perpendicular. So from the previous theorem, we know that this OY is equals to OX. So this we know right because the length of the chords are equal and we know that this is the radius right so and we also know that if a chord is or if a perpendicular is drawn from the chord from the center then it bisects the chord so basically we also know that a y equals to y b equals to a b over 2 right and how much is AB? AB is 3 over 2R. So 3 over 2R times half. So basically 3 over 4R. So now AY is equals to 3 over 4R. So if we zoom this triangle here, so we have this as the radius. We have AY as 3 over 4R. So what is the value of this? let's call it x so we have x square plus 3 over 4 r whole square is equals to small r square right so x square would be equals to r square minus 9 r square over 16 right so how much is 16 minus 9? 16 minus 9 is 7. So basically 7 r square over 16. That is x square. Right? So how much is x? x is equals to under root of 7 over 4 r. So that is x. And x is basically this length. So what is asked? What is the distance between the chords a, b and c, d? So now also from the previous theorem, we know that if this is x, this is also going to be x because they are equidistant because AB and CD are equal. So this OY and OX are equal, right? So we found the value of OY. So we found, so this X is basically OY, right? And OX is also is going to be 
under root of 7 or over 4. So how much is xy? So xy is basically, we have to add both of them. So 2 times under root of 7 or over 4. So 2 and 4 cancels. So the correct answer is under root of 7 or over 2. And that is the answer. So this is a very interesting question because in this question, we are using multiple properties. What are the properties we have used so far? So one is that if we are drawing a perpendicular from the center to a chord, then it bisects the chord. And that property we used to find that OX and uh, to find that AY and YB are equal, right? So this is one property that we used. And what was the other property that we used? That since AB and CD are equal in length, then the distance from the center must be equal. So because this AB and CD are equal in length, then we were able to deduce this from the uh, properties that we discussed earlier. So again, very interesting uh, question because we have used multiple properties here. In the exam, you may not get questions that are uh, uh, using multiple properties, but it's always do, good to, uh, you know, practice questions like this. So in the exam, if you are, uh, you know, required to use one property, you can very fast, use, you know, use that property, right? Uh, so that's this question. So let's move on to the next section. And the next section is basically the, the last section in which we'll talk about equation of a circle. So let's talk about equation of a circle. So this is basically kind of uh, in the coordinate geometry area. So let's say we are given the axis x and y and we are given the center of the circle. So the center of the circle is at point let's say h comma k. Okay. And the radius of the circle is r. Okay. So we are asked to find the equation of the circle. Center is h comma k and the radius is r. So what is the equation? The equation is x minus h whole square plus y minus k. So x minus x coordinate of the center whole square plus y minus y coordinate of the center whole square is equals to r square. What is r? r is basically the radius, right? So that is the general form of the equation. So let's say uh, the, let's say the, uh, so here we have, uh, let's say the radius is negative two comma three and uh, sorry, the center is negative two comma three and the radius is, let's say two. So what is the equation of the circle? It's going to be x minus of minus two whole square plus y minus 3 whole square equals 2 square. So basically x plus 2 whole square plus y minus 3 whole square equals 4. So that would be the equation of the circle. Okay. So, so very simple. Okay. So let's do a question on this and then, uh, yeah, that's, that's all for, for today's session. So let's, let's do one last question uh, for the session today. So what would be the equation of a circle which passes through the point 0 comma minus 1 to find the equation of a circle passing through so passing through let's let's say this is x so passing through x okay so that is what we are asked to find okay and we are given few options so what are the options let's say a is given as uh, and the radius is also given okay so what is the radius uh, okay let's not give the radius let me give you the center so the center is also given so the center is uh, we have 3, so center we have x coordinate as 3 and y coordinate we have it as minus 4, okay? So how do we 
find the equation of the circle. So first we'll write in the general form. So x minus 3 whole square plus y minus of minus 4, right? Whole square equals r square and r is unknown, right? And we'll use this point to find r. So we get x minus 3 whole square plus y plus 4 whole square equals r square. So now we'll substitute the value of the given point, which is x. So in place of x, we'll put 0. So 0 minus 3, so we have minus 3 whole square plus here we have minus 1. So minus 1 plus 4 is plus 3 is equals to r square. So 3 square is 9 and 3 square is 9. So r square is basically 18. So what is the equation? x minus 3 whole square plus y plus 4 whole square equals to 18. And that is your answer. Okay, so again, very simple questions come uh, when, you know, equation of a circle is given or stuff like that. So these are few variations of questions that may come um, for your, uh, for questions like this. Okay, so you are given the, the point, right? So, and you are given the center, right? So you are given the value of the center and you are given the point. So you can very simply find the answer right so here we got x minus 3 so x is 0 right so 0 minus 3 so 3 square is 9 so we will get 3 square is 9 right and seven similarly here is y plus 4 so y is basically minus 1 so minus 1 plus 4 is plus 3 so 3 square 9 3 square 9 so r square is basically 18 and we found the answer right so uh so that was all uh for today's session and uh, with this session we have actually completed uh, circles uh, especially the important parts that that come in the SAT exam so next couple of sessions on circles would be uh, questions on circles and uh, we'll you know whatever we have discussed theory will uh, practically uh, use those theory applications and solve questions on it so again that would be very helpful for you and we'll I'm looking forward to that uh, interesting session with everyone. Uh, so uh, if, if you like the video so far, give it a thumbs up. And uh, for uh, more such contents and for getting notification uh, for any new uploads, please subscribe to our channel. And uh, we'll see you guys in our next session. Thank you and have a good day.